Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate, this is Diamond Painting and Dr. Pepper, and today I am coming at you with a whip and chat. We are working on I'm Here for the Food by Mrs. Butter D. This is a new kit that I started, um, I think March 12th, but I haven't done a whip and chat with it yet. Um, it has been featured in a couple of my videos for like my read along. But as far as whip and chats, I just haven't rolled it to work on when it was time to do a whip and chat. So that's what we're doing today because that's what I rolled to do. This is the very first kit that I am working on with the new perforated cover. And I was so excited to try it out because there were a lot of reasons I thought it might work for me. And I've talked about those in previous whip and chats, I think, but um I have I have a new glue dot in my pen and it's it's trying to keep all my drills um anyway but yeah um my little spinny wheel has rolled this kit to work on quite a few times it seems to favor it and so I'm I'm almost like the whole top and then this whole side done with this kit so far and so my update on the perforated cover is that I am loving it. I am having so much fun. I didn't have to section off my kit with washi tape and then I don't have to have my little ceramic knife to help me cut a new section. And I don't have to worry about trying to cut straight or <laughs> like go off, not go off the rails with the little ceramic knife because I I'm, I'm, wasn't very good at that. <laughs> um, so yeah, and for me, I'm not having any issues getting it to tear straight. Um, I kind of go slow when I'm, you know, tearing a new section and it works for me just fine. Um, you can't really see where it ends so I kind of go by feel and then when I'm placing my first few drills I just um, I place them at the edge of where the section stops and that way I always know how far to go so I, it doesn't bother me that I can't see the edge of it because I just have other ways of marking that for myself but yeah that's that's my thoughts on it so far. I am kind of sad that all of my kits don't have this. <laughs> I am using a pen from Say Plubo Tour. And this is one that I got in a D stash from Katie Diamonds and Washi. And it smells like cinnamon. And I love it a lot. And I just feel like it fits this kit really well. So that's what I'm using pen-wise, and then I'm using a Muni Made tray because those are my favorite and I tend to pretty much always use one. I did recently manage to get my hands on a couple new ones and this is one of my newer ones and it's, it's a solid like bubblegum pink and I just love it. I have been crazy busy this past week. Whew. I think I've mentioned in my past couple whip and chats that work has been kind of filling up my evenings and stuff. And, and I will caveat that with the fact that I don't start working until later in the day because I am a night owl and my flexible schedule is so appreciated. It allows me to get at least some sleep at night because I'm not only am I a night owl, I'm also an insomniac and I have a lot of trouble falling asleep, especially on evenings where I know I have to get up at a certain time the next day. I don't know if that kind of plays into my um, pathological demand avoidance where it's just the fact that I know I have to do something on a schedule makes me have a hard time catering to that schedule. So my brain won't let me fall asleep. It's, it's such a dumb thing. <laughs> but um, I have noticed that it is especially bad on nights where I have to get up at a specific time the next day. So I do start work later in the day than most people. And that means I also work later into the evening. Um, 
but it works out. But lately I've been working a bit longer hours sometimes just to try to wrap things up so that I don't get too far behind. I hate getting behind because then it feels like a never-ending mountain of work that I can't seem to catch up on. So I'll I'll do whatever I can usually to try and make sure that I don't get behind. And if that means working a few extra hours one night, that's fine with me because a lot of the time then I can, um, you know, take that time off the, the end of the next day or something. Um, but yeah, that just means it's been harder for me to um, keep up with videos. <laughs> you guys might have noticed there was no what you got Wednesday this last week and it was just because I didn't have time <laughs> to film it. And um, I barely had time to finish the reading and then do the video for my read along. Although I did get it done in time, I was up pretty late working on that. And so I'm, I'm really glad I managed to get that done because um, it has been kind of stressful trying to do those because I don't, it's not a video that I'm used to making and so I don't have like a a locked in formula for how to do it in my head and what to say how much to say you know so it takes me a lot longer to kind of figure out how each video is going to go in that series and each one is different because we're talking about different parts of the book and I want to make sure I don't spoil anything for future reading and um all that stuff. So it takes me a while and it just makes me anxious that I'm not going to do it right. So I tend to procrastinate it and get it done like the night before it's supposed to go up, <laughs> which is extra stressful because then I'm worried I won't get it done in time. And my brain is at the same time, it's like, oh, this is stressful. I really don't want to work on it. And also, I am determined to do this justice and do a good job and not let people down. And I love this book and I love being able to talk about it in video form. And this is so cool, you know, like, so my brain is doing both of these things at once. It's like it doesn't know what it wants. Yeah, I'm determined to keep up with it, but I'm also struggling with my brain to make it happen. <laughs> and I'm, I'm curious how I'm going to handle upcoming weeks because I'm kind of mulling it over. Uh, we have our Disney trip coming up and I am going to be gone for nearly a week that week and probably won't have any time to read or work on that video for that week. So my initial plan was to read ahead and film ahead and have that video done early, but I'm struggling to even keep up at this point just because um, I wasn't anticipating everything in my life being so busy. So not only has work been busy, but I've also had um, all of my weekends full um, recently in great ways. I, like, I wouldn't change it, but I just wasn't necessarily planning for that. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to read ahead and get that done for that week. So I don't know if I'll just extend the read along then or do two weeks at once to catch up or what. But that's something that's been on my mind. As far as reading goes, other than The Way of Kings, I was not able, because everything's been so busy, to finish Carnival before um, my Libby app, because it's borrowed from the library, so the library needed it back, because it had been the two weeks that you get to borrow it, and I hadn't finished it. So I hadn't even read any more than the last time I talked to you guys, so I was still at 33% when I had to let it go back to the library. So I'll either just buy it on Audible, 
when I want to start it up again, or I will put it back on my um, Libby list to download again later and borrow it at a later date. I'm just worried I'll forget what happened if I don't finish listening to it soon. And then I would have to start from the beginning. So um, I might just purchase it with one of my Audible credits because I was liking it. So I'd feel pretty safe doing that. And then part of the reason that I didn't get any more read on it was because there was one evening where I was in the mood to read a physical book and Casey, my son, has been pestering me to read The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson, uh, which is one of the few books of his that I haven't read yet. And it's one of his like young adult series. And even though there's only one book in that series so far, he does intend it to be a series. And I think he's going to write the next one in the next couple of years. So that's exciting. So anyway, I read that in like two days. I spent, I, I was pretty burnt out from just my brain on overdrive. And I spent that whole evening reading and read like 77% of it that night and then just finished it up the next day. And if I had listened to Caraval instead, I'd have finished that, but um, I wasn't in the mood to be in my office. I just wanted to go lay down on the couch or my bed and be comfortable and read a physical book because I haven't done that in a while. So that's what I did. And it was really enjoyable. And I'm actually really glad that I read that one as a physical book because if you've never read it that book is about um, the magic system in that book is based on chalk drawings it's really cool and the book itself has a lot of illustrations in it to kind of show you how things work and I think I would have missed out on quite a bit if I had listened to the audio version of that. So yeah, it's kind of fantasy, but it's also kind of what they call it like gear punk, not quite steampunk, but it's in an alternate version of our reality where the United States of America instead is the United Isles of America. So the continent is instead of one big landmass has been somehow broken up into a bunch of different islands and they have similar names to some of our states and areas, but definitely some major differences. So that part of it is fascinating to me. I love like alternate universe kind of stuff or alternate history kind of stuff. And I really enjoyed it. And then it's also kind of a murder mystery or um, they're not sure if the people are dead or just missing. So I love mysteries, too, and trying to find out who done it and everything. And it was fun. I highly recommend it. It was very, very fun and a quicker read than most Brandon Sanderson books, I would say. It was only like maybe 400 pages instead of you know, a thousand. <laughs> and then in the middle of me being on notice that Caraval was going to have to go back to the library soon and knowing that I wasn't going to have enough time to finish it, I also got notified on my Libby app that two more of my holds were ready to download and read. And uh, <laughs> it was like when I originally put them on hold, they weren't supposed to be ready for like a certain amount of time, like it estimates the amount of time. And I tried to spread everything out so I wouldn't have everything come all at once, but both of these were early. <laughs> so I had to like, luckily there's a thing on Libby where you could like delay when you download it. And I guess maybe it, um, it goes to another person in queue first and then comes back to you. So I did that on both of them and I'm hoping that 
I'll have a bit more time to read in the coming weeks so that I can read those when they come up because I'm excited to read both of them. One of them is called, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, Sabriel. It could be Sabriel. Um, and I'm blanking on the author's name right now, but I've heard it's really good. It's also like a YA, so I think it won't take too long to read. And I love YA novels a lot of the time. But it's supposed to have a really good, like, familiar, like a creature familiar. And I, I love that trope. So I'm excited about that one. I don't know much about it. And then the other one is Red Rising, which I've heard a lot about. And I'm, I've heard nothing but good things from people. So really excited to try that series out. But I just need to have a little bit more time because <laughs> I don't want the same thing that happened with Carval to happen with these ones and not be able to finish them before they have to go back. So also this week, <laughs> um, I had to go attend Casey's parent-teacher conferences because it's that time. This coming up week is spring break, so... They do like a progress check-in right before spring break. And so that last time they did this, he's in high school. And the last few times I've been to conferences at the high school, they've either been in the gym or in the commons area. And the teachers all have desks set up in that big area and then you just go from one teacher to the next you know um finding the ones that your child is taking classes from and you go and talk to them and you can easily see if one of them is busy with another parent and then you could like go to a different one instead but this time they decided it would be a good idea to just have you go to the teacher's classrooms to talk to them, which was very frustrating because their Casey's classes are literally all over the school. So we'd have to go to one and then hoof it to the next one and hope nobody was already in there because then you, it was hard to tell how long that person had been there. And you don't just want to stand there and wait for them to be done when you could be talking to a different teacher during that time because you they only had it open for like two hours and then they were going to go on a break for a couple hours and come back so and we didn't get there right at the beginning point because I thought it was going to be the same as last time when everybody was in the same place and it didn't take nearly that long and so we did end up running out of time because we tried to get to his physics teacher and she was with someone. So we walked around to a couple other teachers. And by the time we got done with those, it was the cutoff time. And she, the physics teacher was already out of her classroom and gone. So we didn't get to everybody. Um, I didn't even try to go to Casey's weights teacher because I already know he hates that class. And... Um, I'm not sure if there's anything that we can do to make him hate it less. Uh, but also, I'm not sure what his weights teacher could really tell me that I didn't already know. <laughs> it's not like he has work that he is late turning in in that class or anything, because you just you go there and you do the thing and you're done. So anyway, that was that was frustrating. Uh, it was a lot of walking around. We tried to be smart and like hit all the classrooms that were in the same side of the school in an, in order, but some teachers weren't there. And then we had wasted time walking down that hallway to get to them. So yeah, it was just, it was a big thing. But Casey is not doing the best at school. He is having some issues with turning stuff in and... All of his teachers pretty much said the same thing, that he's, they can tell he's very smart and he understands, you know, the assignments and everything, 
but that he doesn't take part in class very much and he always has his nose in a book, <laughs> which I can't be mad at because that's how I was in school too. I always had a book and that was always more interesting to me than whatever was going on in class. But the difference is that I was able to get my work done first and then read <laughs> or like get all my work done at home and then read and make sure it was turned in. And Casey's not keeping up with that part. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, his grades are reflecting that for sure. So we're going to try and do a few things to help him course correct so that he can get good grades by the end of the term and not have to retake any classes. This is all new territory for me because my older kids were a bit more self-reliant and self-motivated. And so uh, I'm not used to having a kid that just, he's kind of like his dad was in school where if it doesn't interest him, then he pretty much doesn't care to do it. Um, he does care about his grades though. So it's kind of this, and he, he also has that. I was talking earlier about my pathological demand avoidance. He's got that going on too. So if, if it's something he didn't get to choose to do and it's something he's being forced to do, he has a hard time making his brain be okay with working on it. And I totally get that. I'm the same way. And so, yeah, it's just, it's just rough at school for him. But it might be a moot point coming up here soon anyway because our school district is threatening to go on strike. There's um, several things that they're asking for that the district either can't or won't agree to. So there is a strong possibility of a strike in the next week or so. And I'm not sure how long that would go on, but Casey would be out of school for an indeterminate amount of time until they can get that all worked out. And then I don't know what that would do for like summertime. Like, I don't know if that means he would have to stay in school once they're back in session for a longer period of time into the summer than normal. So that's kind of frustrating and uncertain right now. But I'm sure he wouldn't mind having a break from school. I'm just worried he'll forget everything that they've been trying to teach him in the past few weeks and then they'll have to like start over with all that when they do come back. Have you guys ever had to go through a school strike with your kids or like maybe when you were in school? And if so, how long did it last? <laughs> I know that won't necessarily have any prediction on how long it would last for us, but um, yeah, just tell me it was okay. It's another one of those when it rains, it pours kind of weeks because uh, we, I think I mentioned in a couple of weeks ago, maybe, um, that we had to take our car in to the shop because uh, when I was taking Fletcher to the train station and I turned the car back on to go home, my whole dash was just dark and my turn signals weren't working and my gas gauge wasn't working. Nothing on the dash was working. So we took it into the shop and it looks like it's going to be about $1,800 to fix. So there's that. <laughs> and they've had it for like a couple weeks now. And they're not, they're not in any hurry, which, okay, we're not really either. Because it's our third car that we mostly use for um, when we're needing to pick up large things or when there's a lot of us needing to go somewhere because it's bigger. It's a Nissan Armada. So it's a big car. And I usually, if I have to take my dog Max to the groomer, I usually put him in that car because he's a big dog. So he fits best in that one. <laughs> I don't know when they're going to have that ready for us to pick up, but it's going to be 1800 And then it's starting to 
get a bit warm around here, <laughs> which is really nice. I'm loving the sunshine, but we did turn on our AC for the first time this year, uh, this week, and noticed it wasn't cooling our house down. <laughs> So then we had to have, you know, the AC people come out and look at it. And it turns out that they're, they say they've never seen this before, but there's a leak in the line for the coolant or something. And they don't know where it would be. And by the time they got done diagnosing it, um, apparently it's possible, depending on how long it's been leaking, that it messed up the compressor which is kind of an expensive part. And by the time they got di done fixing the leak and then checking the compressor and everything, we would have been talking about several hundred dollars at that point. And then if the compressor is dead, then it's gonna be almost as much for all that as it would be to put in an, a whole new system. <sighs> And since the lifetime of these systems is about 12 to 15 years, this one happens to be right at the end of its life anyway, because our house was built in 2013. So it was built 11 years ago. And so we pretty much have decided that it doesn't make sense to do all this work on the old one, especially if there's a chance we could just find out that it might need that new compressor and it's at the end of life anyway and that would cost as much as getting a new system put in. So then we just had them quote us for a new system and it's $3,000, guys. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's just one of those, one of those weeks, I guess. So, I mean, I'm... We, we were lucky enough to not have to pay taxes this year. We, we got a return. So that was helpful. Um, but we do basically have to pay almost the same amount as our usual taxes with all these repairs we have to be making to our stuff and the fact that we had to buy a new dishwasher recently and all that jazz. Like, it just... It's never-ending. And luckily we do have savings for stuff like that, and that's what it's for, you know? But it just, it's one of those things where, like, that's not what you want to spend money on, <laughs> you know? But it definitely could be worse. Uh, the other night, Matt and I were driving to Taco Bell, and it, it was interesting because usually if it's, you know, if someone's going to go get food, it's usually me, and it's usually me by myself. Matt doesn't typically like to go on errands like that but this time he just decided he was gonna jump in the car with me and it was nighttime and we were gonna head down to Taco Bell. Casey was staying over at my dad's that night and so we were heading down the road towards Taco Bell and it was a residential street kind of in an industrial residential area in our little sub town suburb thing. And I saw the weirdest thing up ahead of me. Like I couldn't tell how far away it was. It looked like someone was swinging a baton with a red light on it up in the air in an arc. And I was so confused what I was looking at until we got a little closer and realized what it actually was, was that we had just witnessed a car literally flip over nose to tail and land upside down and it it wasn't going fast like we saw this light arc across you know the sky <laughs> ahead of us and it, the car hadn't been driving fast it didn't hit another car so we are just flummoxed as to how this even happened but we literally just watched a car flip over and I was thinking about whether or not I should dial 911, but there were um, there was someone walking on the sidewalk who was running towards the car, and then we saw the car door open, the driver door that was facing us because the, the car was upside down sideways across the road. The driver door opened and someone got out, um, you know, stood up from being upside down. So luckily it seemed the driver was fine. 
and there were other people around, so I was I was sure that someone had called the emergency services, but that was wild. <laughs> That's just not something you ever expect to see on a residential street late at night with nobody else around. Like, what in the world happened? I have no idea. But I'm glad that it looked like the driver was okay. <laughs> Whew, so anyway, that was Thursday night. And then on Friday... All of my kids who live about an hour away south of us came for the whole weekend because it was my eldest daughter's birthday weekend and she didn't have plans with her friends till next weekend when she's going camping. So she decided to spend the weekend up here with us and Fletcher also got this weekend off for Sam's birthday. So he was able to come. So we had Sam and Fletcher and Sam's boyfriend, Adrian, all here for the entire weekend. And it was so much fun. <laughs> I, I live, by the way, if you can hear my dog snoring, I'm so sorry. She is loud right now. Uh, I live for the moments when all of my kids can be in the same place all at once. And we didn't have quite everybody this weekend because my stepdaughter Raya wasn't here, but we did have most of them. And we had a weekend full of playing board games and video games together. And then on Saturday, we went to, I talked about this a little bit in my last whipping chat with Fletcher, where Fletcher joined, but we went to Enchanted Forest, which is a semi-local theme park to us that's just a little bit on the creepy side because it's themed on fairy tales and just the way it's designed is a little bit, I don't know, it's like whimsical but creepy and it's so much fun we have been there several times because it's local and it's fun and they have some rides that we like and some other activities so unfortunately this weekend the log ride which is our favorite one was not open so we didn't get to go on that one but all the other rides were open they have one that's like a shooting gallery where you're, you know, you're in a buggy that's going along a track and then you shoot your little laser gun at laser targets and try to get a high score. So that was fun. And then they have a bobsled, like kind of like the Matterhorn, but not as extravagant. And so we went on that. They have a haunted house. And a western town that's got, like, fun little, almost like life-size dioramas. It's, it's a town, and then you can look in the windows, and they've got little scenes with, you know, fake people in there. And it's just, it's creepy cool. And then we also got to see uh, a live play that they put on called Snow White and the Seven Dorks. And it's mostly kind of aimed at kids. But it, it's done in such a way that it's also entertaining for adults. <laughs> so we had a good time with that. And then they also have a live Irish band that plays there every day. So we caught that and they were really good. They're called Possibly Irish. <laughs> so yeah, we spent the day there and had a great time. It was very nostalgic for me and for the kids because we've been going there since they were a lot littler. So it brings back good memories.
Good power, little power, back power. And I might have shared some pictures or video with you guys as I'm chatting about this. So hopefully you enjoyed those if I did. But that is one of the reasons why this video is late. I'm going to start a new section here while we're chatting. And that is because... Today, Sunday, everyone was still here and they were able to stay a lot later than they usually get to um, because Adrian is on spring break, so he didn't have to get home for any homework or anything like that. So they were able to stay till mid-afternoon instead of going home like late morning and one of the things, today is Sam's actual birthday, and one of the things she really wanted to do for her birthday was go to In-N-Out. One of the towns close to us has an In-N-Out that's been here for a few years, but it's also always very busy because it's the only In-N-Out within, like, several hundred miles, I think, and there's no way... Unless you want to wait hours, there's no way you can go through the drive through And you're still going to be waiting a long time if you go into the inside of the lobby. But because it's her birthday and they were up visiting, she wanted to have that for lunch. So we went down there and it was a very cold day, but there wasn't enough room. There was literally no room in the lobby for us all to stand there and wait for our food. So... A couple of us stayed inside and the rest of us went out and sat in the car with the heater going <laughs> until our food was ready. And it did take, I think it took like an hour. Um, but then we had animal style fries and double doubles and shakes and it was really good. And then all the kids left to go back home. So that part's always the hardest is when they leave. But yeah, so seeing them leave is always the hardest part for me. I try not to get emotional until they're already gone so they don't have to feel bad that I'm upset because, like, obviously they've done a great thing to come visit. <laughs> so I don't want them to feel upset about visiting. Um, but I can't help it when they're gone. I always have a case of the blues for a while. So... That is part of the reason that this whip and chat is late is because they were here all weekend starting on Friday when I usually try to start filming my whip and chat is Friday or Saturday. And then I was planning to film it today instead and then upload it this evening, but I did a dumb thing, you guys. <laughs> I was trying to delete. I had I had made a backup of some of the older videos like I usually do. I have a, a backup drive and I moved some, some of my folders from my video folder over to the backup drive and then I went to delete the folders from the main drive so I'd have more space. So I selected a few of the folders in my video main folder and hit delete and it said this is too large to sent to the recycle bin, do you want to permanent, permanently delete? And I was like, yeah, sure, fine, I'll do that because I already have these backed up to my other drive. But instead of deleting the folders that I had selected, you guys, it just deleted the whole video folder, <laughs> the whole thing, which had like stuff that I apparently didn't back up well, like my 
asset files for my intro. So if you heard my intro to this video and it sounded a little different, that's because I had to spend this evening remaking the whole thing. Because I stupidly managed to delete it. <laughs> I There were definitely tears at that because I really liked my intro and I liked the sound effects that I had managed to get the first time and I feel like trying to recreate them, they didn't turn out as well. So that's frustrating. Um, I did try several things to try and get my folder back, uh, looked it up online and all that, and they just, it was just gone. There was no backup, there was no recovery, there was no restore. So luckily I was able to find the same transition file that I used for my intro, and then I just had to re-record the sound effects. So that was a bummer. But that also is the other reason this is going up the next day is because I had to spend my evening doing that instead of actually filming and editing this whip and chat. <laughs> so now it's kind of too late in the evening for me to want to post it. So I'll just post it tomorrow. So you're seeing this on Monday. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, I think that's it about all that I had to update you guys on. So let's do yay or nay. So the yay or nay question for last week was one that Fletcher came up with and his question was, have you ever been caught talking in your sleep? And if so, what did you say? <laughs> and so for you guys, the yays have it, but just barely. It was four to three for those who responded, saying that four of you, yes, have been caught talking in your sleep. As for me, I don't think I've ever talked in my sleep that I know of. I haven't been told that I have. Although I will answer for Fletcher in that, yes, he has both talked and walked in his sleep. When he was, I still remember a time when he was probably around, I'm going to say seven or eight. I heard a noise in the middle of the night and I got up and went to our middle bathroom that's kind of was in between the kids' rooms. And he was in there, but just standing in the middle of the room, in the dark room, in the middle of the night. And I went in and he kind of like, just looked at me kind of blankly and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he just did this <laughs> laugh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you guys, it was so weird. <laughs> and that's not the only time, but that's probably my favorite time. And then one time we were staying at a hotel room at Disney World and he was sharing room with Sam and he got up and started trying to answer Sam's phone, thinking that it was ringing. And Sam was like, what are you doing? That's my phone. Why are you up? And he was just like, your phone's ringing. But it, it wasn't ringing. <laughs> so that, that's a couple of memorable times for Fletcher. You guys, let's see. Amanda Kuzdas said, yay, the first time I talked in my sleep was telling my college roommate four times in a row that her friend had called. <laughs> then Angel Lee Rose said, unfortunately, yay for me, I've done it a few times. One, said my ex's name, oops, and two, shouted a swear word, oh my gosh. <laughs> so not only do you have to be caught talking in your sleep, but those are pretty embarrassing things to have said. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. And then Miranda Randall said, yay, I have been caught talking in my sleep by my husband and I was just yelling at the kids to get in the house. <laughs> Hashtag mama for life. <laughs> that sounds about accurate. And then for the nay side, we have Just Diamond Paint said, nay, I've never been caught sleep talking. I did go through a sleep walking era. I was about three or four years old. My mom took several pictures of me. She thought it was kind of funny. Fortunately, I stopped doing that by my fifth birthday. <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, Fletcher has also stopped doing it now, too. But that was really, that was really something. 
As for this week's yay or nay question, this one pertains to some political things going on in our country right now in the U.S., but you could also answer just in general if you're not from the U.S. Do you think political leadership roles should have age limits? Like, do you think there should be an age by which a person should no longer, for instance, be able to run for president? Or maybe not an age limit necessarily, but like a cognitive test? And if you choose to answer and and discuss why, just make sure you're being respectful of other people in your comments and stuff. I do enjoy both political and religious discussion and will probably sometimes ask some of those questions because I think it's those are really interesting topics. But I always want to be respectful of everyone who will answer. So yeah, just keep it respectful in the comments and answer yay if you think there should be an age limit or a mandatory cognitive test before you can be instated in that position. And nay, if you don't think there needs to be those things. That said, guys, I got through a whole section and a little bit extra. So thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you had fun. And I will see you all in the next video, which will hopefully be a What You Got Wednesday if I manage to get it filmed this week. Otherwise, I will see you in whichever video comes next. Bye, everybody.